Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. We're at the world class Wild Rose Kennels. Hi folks, I'm here with one of our speakers this morning, did a fantastic job. Uh, tell the folks who you are. Uh, Katie Banky. And uh, you were born in where? Anchorage, Alaska. I don't know anybody has been born in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> and you're down here in Oxford, Mississippi. It's what happens when you take a left turn in Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> and you are, you know photography well. I do. And, and, uh, and you were talking about, you are talking about your presentation. Now what's your, what's that with the name? This is Xander. He is is one of Wild Rose's sires. Sorry. He is one of our uh, one of our daddy dogs. Yeah. He is also a demonstration dog. He'll be out later doing what he does. And your pictures, uh, you send your photographs. Uh, who all has your photographs? Uh, Town and Country has, Purina, Ducks Unlimited. Yeah. A couple good names in there. <laughs> Real quick, just get some folks, our viewers, tell the folks, our viewers, if they want to take pictures of some of great pictures of dogs in a nutshell, tell them what to do and not to do, maybe. Big thing is, earlier in the morning, later in the evening, is going to give you that contrasting light to prevent prevent the uh, more of the black dog blob mm -hmm. and you'll get more definition and shape out of the dogs uh, get down low get on your knees I tend to get on my belly and shoot about dogs eye level you uh, you were talking about something you really get sometimes get muddy and everything else what you oh, do when you get down I get caked mud grass everything just it it just cakes on and a good story to end it with now your mom and dad were up in Alaska but they ended up moving where? Right here in Oxford. That's cool. Right down the street. That's about 10 minutes over. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you so much and uh, great work you do. Thank you. Okay, so we're getting a tour of them. Wow. So here's Teddy. Look at that. And then Morgan. Wild Rose Kennels. Why, what makes them so good? They travel, they're well behaved. You'll see during the demonstration they listen for hand signals really clearly. They're steady. They don't go through and and run away or act up. They're going to sit there right where Mike tells them to sit and you send them off different directions. It's a cool show. Wow. Top dogs. Folks, this is special right here. If all of you dog lovers like me that's had these those special dogs, they have a place set aside here on the ground. So tell us, tell us about this place. This is fascinating. Many of these dogs were former sires or mama dogs who produced the bloodlines of Wild Rose. So these are the original, some of the original these bloodlines? Are the these are the ones that the stories are based off of. Wow. So one of the biggest names out here, there's two big ones. One okay. of them is, is Drake. He was the first Ducks Unlimited mascot that we had. Really? And then one of the other really big names right here is Kane. And Kane was a 
basically the grandfather of many of the lines. Kane. Kane. Wow. So Kane is Deke's daddy. Really? Mm-hmm. Look at this. This is fascinating. And then there's a lot of dogs out here that you just hear the, the stories of. Molly. Um, the yeah. big hunters. 1990. I noticed the ages. Most of them, what, 14-ish or 15-ish? Give or take. Because Wild Rose is really particular about their bloodlines, yes. making sure there's no cancer or severe issues in their in their lines, the dogs tend to live a pretty long times. Wow. Well, we're in a little bit of a training area, so uh, look at this little puppy over here. Goodness gracious. Look, is that precious? How old is she? Oh, probably a couple of weeks old. A couple of weeks old. Look at there. All right, so down there at that culvert, tell us the story why you have a culvert for the training. So a couple years in the Dakotas, Mike Stewart was out hunting, and a pheasant fell on the other side of a culvert, and the dog was not willing to go through the culvert to get the pheasant. So they ended up having to go around and get the pheasant. Mike wanted to recreate the scenario here in Oxford. That way, the next time dogs would come up against that scenario, they were comfortable practicing that technique of going through culverts or tunnels to be able to pick up a retrieve. Cool. And over here, the stairs? Stairs are for practice, so dogs do not jump in front of you or behind you while you're going up and down the stairs, creating a safer scenario Wow! for a dog in the home or at work. Cool. It also has a blind underneath to practice getting in and out of blinds safely and a ramp on the other side to practice going up and down ramps. Okay. Can you say good morning? <laughs> Well, it's nothing but trouble. That's precious. Well, it's nothing but trouble. Okay, tell us about this map here. This is fascinating. The map shows where all the Wild Rose dogs have ended up after they leave here, Oxford. You get them as far as, you know, the very tip of Florida, all the way to Alaska. One of these blue dots is me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're on Wild Rose dog number four, so we keep plenty of them. And then you've got the green pins. Here are the associate trainers. So people who take puppies or dogs that have been started and get them a little further along in their training. And then you have the orange pins, which are satellite facilities. So that's Jasper, Arkansas. Here's Dallas, Texas, Hillsboro, North Carolina, Denver, Colorado, Idaho. Wow. So where dogs go and practice alternative techniques in new environments. The southeastern United States. Of course, the, the northeastern has a, a lot of them here, but in the southeast right here, that's fascinating, isn't it? There's a yeah. lot of dogs wow. here. Wow. They're getting so many of them that Memphis even started having to pin off the map. Oh, is that right? Is that Memphis? <laughs> yeah, that's Memphis. Okay. Then you know, over back over here, the gray-haired man that matches me. <laughs> It's the Ducks Unlimited mascot, the current Ducks Unlimited mascot, Deke. So working with Drake, the Deke took his place. Put him on the whistle. We saw Morgan do a recall, the final lighter. So what we're going to do, attempt here today, is put four buffers out. I'm going to send four dogs, stock four dogs to the whistle, make them sit out there, and then we're going to send them one dog straight through, like a field goal. All right? And then we're going to send each dog back. That's a pretty good square. <laughs> <laughs> Xander, uh. Murphy, Murphy, Scotty, Morgan. So they're not only steady here, they're steady out there. So I, if I shoot a pheasant down, it looks like a game here. These are just all part of tricks for shows, you know. But this really works on pheasants. When I knock a pheasant down, they stop, they stay there, and they get a command. No matter if any other dog is running. Good left and right and back. 
bumper toss three bumpers out and attempt to send the dogs in three different directions, one right through you. I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll see. One, two, three. Murphy. Get on. Get on. So I can stop him on a bird and send him to another one. That would be a situation where you've got a dead bird here and one getting away. You can pull him off the dead bird and send him on the one that's running. So that's good for pheasants and quail, but it's good. we're going to do it on the water in a minute for waterfowl. <laughs> okay. All right, here's the current Ducks Unlimited mascot, 11 years old. You got to have a <laughs> you got to give her a splendid one here. Hey, that's a good job. Thank you. That's the bird. Water bottle. You can put a glove out, uh, a rope. And let's see if he can pick them up for us. There you go. Good job. Here, put it in the head. Put it in the back. He's getting ready for trick or treat. <laughs> Bo bottle, he's got to come back. Yeah. All right. Find the glove. Find the glove. Good boy. Good. Good job. Good. 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 Rope. Rope. There's the rope. All right. He's got his trail. He's been working on his trail item. He's totally right. This is the first time he's ever tried a pumpkin. <laughs> You know, bring it on. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 right in here. Good. So, these dogs have a natural retrieve. Yeah, you got that. 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 Yeah, you got now we're going to put Xander over it and see who's going to be the high jump. Everybody by applauding when the dogs come back. We're going to vote who is the winner of the high jump. That'd be like Xander. Ready? Xander, ready? Xander, get over. Xander. Hey, boy, good boy. Good boy. Oh! Good boy, good boy. Good boy, good boy. Is he going to beat him? Real close to the What about About even. Huh? About even. even. God. Scotty, 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 <laughs> Only a few months ago, we, he was living in poverty under a bridge. <laughs> now he's gainfully employed, mile roads, travels the country, eating three meals a day. But his job is to keep these guys steady. Right? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. There's your pointing lamp. That these thing about these little <laughs> harnesses, I can control the bird. See his face, his expression? If he was not trained to sit, he would point. So if you've got a pointer, don't teach him to sit. Here we're starting out the No kids. Sit down. This works well if you've got to learn to ignore each other. He's coming back. As he's going along, you got more birds dropping. <laughs> and you got to think, not only 
know, they're swimming now and they're in the water and they've got that distraction, but you've got the splashing happening. You've got that much more excitement going on. These dogs have to be under control and working with each other. should mark them and not switch. Stand on line, the original bird. Good Morgan. Okay. And I put them without dogs with decoys, spooking birds. You can hunt in a group and pick the birds officially and get them back. The longer the birds sit out there, the more they're getting blown by the wind, the more they're getting they're getting up and running away. We want to get up, get the dogs on the birds as quick as possible. So there the scenario is you send him for a bird, your buddy says, hey, we got the bird over here, go pick this bird. And as he's going to get it, all of a sudden the bird looks up in the one that had his head down, picks his head up and swimming away. We need to be able to stop that dog and get him to the one that's getting away first and not worry about this one. We'll send another dog to get the bird to take it down. Dogs pick 60 birds in the water, swimming all kind of distances. Okay, now we're going to do a split. Sometimes you're working in a duck line or a boat line and the dog is not beside you. He's sitting remote. You've got to be able to send and cast that dog remote. So they're sitting outside the duck line. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. On a really good duck hunt, or even a driven shootout, shoot, driven shoot like at West, we pick up the Lars out at, at our birthing company. A lot of birds falling at once. You don't want the dog switching. You want the dog steady. And I want them to stay on their bird, but I want to keep, just keep knocking birds down and keep sending dogs. So it's a there's Otto. Otto. Morgan. They don't switch, but we can switch them if we give them a hand signal. Good boy. He thought about it. He thought about it. I wanted to mark it. And that one is Murphy. 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 And we'll win. And we'll give an otter one. What was it? That's beautiful. How long have you had that one? This one? Yeah. Oh, we've had it about six weeks. What's their lifespan? Uh, they can live for years. We've had some of them here eight years old. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Say hello. Hi. Hey. <laughs> What's your name? You say Guy. <laughs> Do you like dogs? Oh, so, yeah. I say my daddy owns Wild Rose, Texas, and we have 30 dogs at our house. How many? Three zero. Three dogs. Can you say that? Sure. That's cool. <laughs> All right, so he's got to go through this. 
process before he graduates our basic gun dog course. So he has to do all four of these with the bird, and then I have to do that point he has to sit for most up here. He's going to fly the birds over. Imagine you got your dog sitting on the front of the line out there, and birds are coming in and landing. They don't pay any attention. Now, you send them, and he starts flushing that feather. He said on the dead bird. So this is where it's done in here. Time after time after time. heated, climatized, we control the temperature in there. The boxes have to be 90 degrees. It's hot as the devil in there. I don't even like to go in there. Buried the gentlemen. Everybody didn't get buried together. So then you've got deep. Now you've got deep sun dust. Hey, that's the pumpkins out there. Train him off the bell. All right, I don't know if that's the only one I can. Also, you can see that. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.